Okay, this question is harder than it seems, and uh, those of you who, who didn't really like the way I'm covering and uncovering will really see the, the reason why I'm doing that, okay? So first, 2x is the nested function, right? So you cover this, and think of this, my hand is the x, okay? So, so let's see, I'll put an x here. <laughs> So here is cosine x, right? Good. Okay, what's the derivative of cosine x? Oh, cosecant x. Cosecant x is uh, negative cosecant of x. Oh, no, no. Cosecant of my hand. This is not what. So cosecant of x times cotangent of my hand, right? But what is this really? What, what am I covering? 2x is being covered, right? 2x, 2x, and then that x, that what I cover, that inside function has to be pulled out and differentiated. <coughs> now, here's another uh, common confusion. Uh, many people think because suddenly you have two, two x appearing twice, don't you have to pull that twice? No, no, you only do that once, okay? Uh, the, the chain rule says, uh, just write the derivative pretending that these are x's, but then you multiply the what's inside. Uh, you, you take out the derivative of the inside function. That's, that's what it says. So you only multiply this once. Okay? What happened to 2x after cotangent? What happened to 2x after cotangent? Why do you put it between um, cosecant? You put it twice. I'm wondering why. Why not put it Oh, I, I, okay. So uh, the, the rule is co cosecant of x prime is negative cosecant of x cotangent of x, right? Yes. So therefore, if, if you're doing cosecant of 2x, just like this, right? Then <coughs> both of these x's must be replaced by 2x, because re you're replacing x by 2x. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say here. That's why both of them are replaced by 2x. And then 2x is pulled down and you differentiate. Okay? Alright, so let's see what we have. This is negative 2 cosecant of 2x cotangent of 2x. But that's only, uh, this is not the second derivative, this is just the first derivative. I should have those written like that. Okay? Then, then you still have to differentiate one more time. So, the second derivative of this function is you have to differentiate this, which means you have to differentiate the first one times the second one you don't do anything to, plus cosecant of 2x. You differentiate the second one cotangent of 2x prime. Yes? Oh, yeah, yeah. so, so uh, <laughs> when you differentiate this, uh, you can think of negative 2 as a separate thing that's multiplied, but uh, that, that's just, uh, it becomes 0, right? If you differentiate negative 2, it becomes 0, right? Yeah. So there's no need. Rather, uh, you just say, well, it's if you're differentiating something with some constant multiple, you just ignore it and just put it in front. And you differentiate the rest. That was the rule for handling constant multiple, right? If you have any constant multiple of a function, you just put, pull the constant outside and differentiate the rest. That was the rule to handle the, the, the product of a constant and any function. And that, that's somehow better than using the, the product rule for, for this one. Okay? So that, that, you should always make use of that rule. Any constant multiple, pull it outside the derivative. Okay. Then, this, the derivative of this is already listed here, so why not just quote it, right? That's another strategy. Negative 2 cosecant of 2x cotangent of 2x cotangent of 2x. Now this one is new. What's the derivative of cotangent? Negative cosecant, right? Cosecant squared, right? So that gives you uh, plus 
negative 2 cosecant of 2x. That's negative 2 cos <coughs> cosecant squared of 2x, where this 2 came from the chain rule. If you pull the inside function outside and differentiate, it gives you that. Okay. Now let's simplify this. This is 4 cosecant of 2x times cotangent squared 2x. Whereas this one, that's 4 plus 4 cosecant cubed of 2x. That's the answer.